In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the nomenclature of benzene, and we're going to see here that it doesn't follow an IUPAC system. These molecules all have common names. For your next organic chemistry test, you should know all the common names of the following molecules that I'm about to list. But we're going to see, even though it doesn't follow a system, they're pretty easy to memorize. For instance, let's look at this molecule right here. If you have a benzene ring with a halogen attached to it, in this case bromine, you would simply call this bromobenzene. This molecule right here has an NO2 group or a nitro group, so he's simply called nitrobenzene. So the names kind of fit. However, not all of them do. For instance, this is a very popular molecule, a benzene ring with a methyl. His name is actually toluene. So that one you're just going to have to straight up memorize. But let's look at some more very common ones. You should also know the name of this molecule right here. This is called phenol. The O-L ending member meaning that it's an alcohol. This molecule right here happens to be called aniline. And here's another popular one here. He has an aldehyde connected to a benzene ring, so he's called benzaldehyde. And the last popular one we should know here is this guy right here. He's got a carboxylic acid connected to a benzene ring, so he's simply called benzoic acid. Now let's focus our attention on the nomenclature for di-substituted benzene rings. For instance, you can have a benzene ring that happens to have two substituents on it, like this. When the substituents are this far apart, or in other words, right next to each other, that's called an ortho substituent. Or we can say these two substituents are ortho to each other. So for example, if you had this molecule right here, his name would be ortho dibromobenzene. Think about where that's coming from. Dibromo, two bromos, ortho, that are ortho apart. Sometimes the ortho is abbreviated, and this molecule is just simply called O-dibromobenzene. You have to know the three different versions of disubstituted rings. This is the first. The second one would look like this. The groups can be this far apart from each other. In this case, we would say they are meta apart. So, for example, again, if we had this molecule, the name of this molecule right here would be meta-dibromobenzene, or we can also substitute it as m-dibromobenzene. And the last one here that we should know, the substituents could be this far apart. This is considered para. And for our example here, if you had this molecule, you would call him para-dibromobenzene, or for short, p-dibromobenzene. Now, let's look at some more examples of nomenclature here. What would you do in this case? Notice here we have two different halogens on the benzene ring. Well, one option you have is since they're ortho apart from each other, you can call this ortho bromochlorobenzene. Notice we're putting the bromo before the chloro because B comes before C in the alphabet. We've done things like this before in nomenclature, so it also works here in benzene nomenclature. And of course, for short, you can call this O bromochlorobenzene. Or you could technically call this 1-bromo-2-chlorobenzene. But careful here, there's a reason why the bromo is on carbon 1 and the chloro is on carbon 2. The numbering here in this case is also set by the alphabet. Since B again comes before C, the bromo has priority, so we call that the 1 carbon in the benzene ring, and therefore the carbon 2 is the carbon with the chlorine. So, to make sure you got this, let's look at this problem right here. What is the name of this molecule? Well, you could call him meta-chloroethylbenzene. Again, here, C-chloro comes before E-ethyl, and they are meta-apart from each other, or remember, you could just call it M-chloroethylbenzene. But in terms of using the numbering system here, you'd have to decide which carbon could be number one. And since again, C comes before E ethyl, Cl would be carbon one, and the ethyl therefore would be on carbon three. So you could also call this 1-chloro-3-ethylbenzene. Now, watch out for things like this. For instance, watch what happens here. Remember, we saw before that if a benzene ring has a methyl on it, that that in itself has a name called toluene. So think of it this way, we're calling that the parent name, 
so the name of this molecule could be metachlorotoluene. Again, we're reading this as toluene in itself means a benzene ring with a methyl. And metachloro is telling us meta away from the methyl is a chlorine, which means we could also call it m-chlorotoluene. And if we wanted to use a numbering system, we would call it 3-chlorotoluene. Very important here, notice that if you call this molecule toluene, then the methyl carbon is by default on carbon 1 within the benzene ring. Let's look at another example here. Some molecules with two substituents have common names. Like for instance, if you have a benzene ring that has a methyl and an NH2 group, it would be called toluene. And if they happen to be meta apart from each other, the name of this molecule would be metatoluene. Even this molecule right here has a common name. Again, if you have a benzene with two methyls attached, then that's called xylene. And if they happen to be ortho apart from each other, then the name of this molecule would be orthoxylene. So you might want to make some flashcards here for some of these common name molecules. Now, what do we do in nomenclature if we have three substituents? Notice now we can't use ortho, meta, or para here. So we have to stick to a numbering system. The question is, how do we number this ring? Who is carbon number one? Well, remember, we want always low numbers in the name of a molecule. So let's say if we call this carbon one, then we can call this carbon two, carbon three here, and carbon four. That would put substituents on carbon 1, 2, and 4. Or you could possibly number it this way. Let's say he's carbon 1, this would be 2, this would be 3, and this would be 4. Notice that puts the substituents on a 1, 3, 4 substitution. Numbering it this way would make the numbers in the name higher. So therefore, we want to number it this way. We've done this before many times when we're doing nomenclature on various molecules in organic chemistry. So now that we have the correct numbering here, let's put it all into the name. This would be 2-chloro. Notice we have to put the chloro first in the name because we go by the alphabet. The fluoro is on carbon 4 here. And 1-nitro, he's the last listed substituent because of N. And then we follow that with benzene. So, to make sure you got this, let's say we want to name this molecule right here. Now, watch what happens here. Notice this benzene ring has a methyl group on it. So, just the benzene and the methyl could be considered toluene. That means if we stick to that as our parent name, remember that also means that this would therefore have to be carbon 1 right here. Which means in order to number this ring, we have to go either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on which way gives us lower numbers. Well, of course, if you see here, counterclockwise would be the way to go because that puts this nitro right here on carbon 2. This would be 3, 4, and 5 right here. So again, the name of this molecule here is 5-bromo-2-nitrotoluene because again, toluene is the parent molecule, making the carbon in the benzene ring that has the methyl carbon 1 and forcing the numbering to go in this direction, therefore putting the bromo on 5 and the nitro on carbon 2. Remember, the best thing you can do here is look at practice problems in your textbook and put yourself in these situations so that you can be good at nomenclature.